Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to draw this rosette. So just one single stellated 12-fold Islamic geometric rosette. The properties it has are the same as the previous rosette, except it's got one additional shape as part of its construction. So we have the central star, so in this case a 12-pointed star because it's a 12-fold rosette. We then have 12 kites, and then we have 12 petals. The quality of this petal is that this, 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 and this, so four of its six sides are the same length. And in this construction, that quality is maintained. And then the additional shape, so one further one, if you're working outwards, is this three-pointed dart shape or bird shape. That's the shape that makes it a stellated rosette. Okay, so we're going to construct one. My advice would be to go as large as you can on your paper and with your compass. And then you can always draw a second or a third, as many as you need, to build up your accuracy, your practice, your confidence, all the skills you need. One thing to do is manage your expectations. If you think that drawing small straight away will be easy and you'll get the accuracy, ooh, that's a tough, tough ask. So try to counter that and build up your practice. And uh, good luck. So let's begin. I'll start with a horizontal line. And I'll mark it centre. The radius that I'm choosing is 10 centimetres because my compass is able to do that comfortably and it fits nicely on A3 paper. Okay, so drawing the circle and then as it's the same as before, you should be quite confident and familiar with this, but that does take time. I'm going to draw two semicircles, just make sure that they end wider than the circle. Okay, I'm going to put that aside, just take another compass, I'm going to construct my vertical. So visualise this distance, imagine half of it and open up your compass to more than that distance. And the closer it is to being half, the closer it will be to the circle. So you're going to draw one arc from one side and then another arc from this side. And this is vertically in line with the centre. Repeat at the top. So these three points line up to draw your vertical. Now, I didn't change my compass. If you did, just check it against your original circle and make sure it's the same size. Now you're going to draw at your north and south point on the circle, ignore these crosses, a semicircle again. So before I commit to drawing, I'm just going to check nothing's changed and I'll make sure it crosses on the left and on the right hand corners, top and bottom. Okay, so while you still have that compass, you're going to do a quarter circles in each corner. And again, a little bit of hovering and checking before committing to an actual line. I'm not sure how many of you have uh, tried drawing in pen, but perhaps give it a go. Because what it forces you to do is think carefully before you commit to making the mark. Because with pencil, that pressure isn't there. I used to draw in pencil a lot, and um, then I, th I was told, try drawing in pen, <gasps> and I did, it was a scary thing. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do are our diagonals. One thing about doing really big radiuses is sometimes they're, as I've shown previously, they're not as long as your 30 centimetre ruler, and so therefore you end up having to um, get a longer ruler or do a bit of a, a fudge. So 10 centimetres works really nicely with this sized ruler. So as we've done before, take the four corners of this inflated square, line them up with the centre and they'll find and adjust to find the corresponding corner here. And if you do the four lines from here through to here and then here, through this to here, you'll divide the whole space into 24. Let the lines go 
to the edge of the circle. I love long lines. I don't know why I have such a strange habit. They actually only need to end at the circle. You'll see. <laughs> Look at that, I might just to pick that out. So the next thing we're going to do is a hexagon just sitting inside of this circle. So go to one point and you'll start at 12 and you'll count on four and do that six times. Two of the sides are vertical. And they always have a corner on the north and south point. So this is the first of our hexagons. Now imagine this is a clock face. So that corresponds to 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock and so on and so forth. We're going to now join 1 to 3 to 5. So the odd numbers of a clock face. But that rule of using or connecting every fourth point of these 24 points still works and now it has two sides that are perfectly horizontal now these are the tips of the darts and what I want you to try and visualize it's a little bit tricky is the beginnings or the edge of the petal so this tip here this where the two hexagons cross they are the tips of the rosette i said that really slowly and weirdly what we need to do is draw a circle centered here just touching these points and there's 12 of them so you can check it quite carefully and now we're going to draw the proportioning line that will give us the proportioning circle and it's measurements the same as before usually we start at 12 o'clock but there's quite a crowd here so what i'm going to do is just start at 11 30 um and it's the tips of these triangles and the circle come down and can you visualize that 90 degrees and then come one further intersection down and what you should do is land on the circle not on the straight line not on the tip not on the curve there this circle the one that you just drew now you only need two points from this line but I'm going to draw it quite fully and every time it hits a line I'm going to make sure I put a mark down from my dashed line and the points that we're after are this and this and it's one intersection from that point and one intersection in from that point. Now we're going to draw our next proportioning circle. Let's make it red. Sorry, a bit excited. We now are able to mark the 12 points we need to draw in our petals. However, before, where as we marked one set of lines, for this one, we're marking the hour points, so 12, 1, and so on. I always put cross beside circles I'm not using. Don't like to erase anything. What's going wrong, guys? Oh. So I've made three mistakes. That's my maximum. When I was a teacher, that's what I used to say. I'm not allowed to make more than three mistakes. And um, let's see how that goes. So now that we've got everything, we're going to draw the parallel sides of the petals. So we'll start at this point. Let's begin. Well, a lot of tippets to avoid. Oh, trauma. And your starting and stopping points this time is the straight line. And then pass one straight line and stop at the second. And then again, start at that straight line, which is the edge of the um, hexagon. And you can see how you go past one of the points or you know line up this point past one line and stop at the second and it happens to line up with the next circled point now if that sticks in your mind great if it doesn't then i'm going to put in a proportioning circle after this that'll help you 
So this circle is not necessary, but I'm going to draw it in in case anyone would like to have it there. And all it does, it gives you the stopping point of each of your parallel sides. So that's an extra help for when you draw this. Because rather than draw all the way through, which gets really messy and confusing, uh, you've got somewhere to stop. We're going to now draw all the petals in. And there we have all the lines we need for the rosette. Now I'm not going to transfer this. I'm not going to um, use it as a part of a painting or getting to a painting. It's just to learn the construction. And then for the fun of it, I'm going to outline it on this paper using a nice calligraphy pen. That's for your benefit, the demonstration. So the overlapping hexagons we'll draw on top of those lines but every single one has a gap in the middle like so so you can just go around doing them all Okay, and next the parallel sides of the petals and you're going to stop and start from their tips to the centre exactly as you did before. So you've done all the kind of the thought, now it's just the outlining. So we have our rosette. Again, this is just the construction to help you to uh, learn how to draw it. I'm going to decorate it because it's joyful. <laughs> 